on the 4th of May, 1997, the deep blue supercomputer had reached this position against the human world champion Gary Kasparov. Here on move 37, the computer went into deep thought, and when it came out, it played a move that marked a turning point. Not in chess history, but in human history. This is how it begins. We are in game two of a six game match. Deep Blue lost the first game to the human but now it has a chance to fight back with white in the second game. And it opens the game with pawn to e4, defending humanity against the machine. Gary Kasparov plays pawn to e5. Knight to f3. Knight to c6. And here, deep blue played bishop to b5. A big surprise. Deep blue plays the Spanish opening here. This opening was first described in 1561 by the royal bishop of Spain, Ruy Lopez. This opening is slow, it's strategical, it's positional. And while computers are unbelievably good at calculation, the Spanish has been studied by humans for 500 years. And it requires insight and true chess understanding rather than brute force. Kasparov kicks the bishop with a6. The bishop drops back. Bishop a4. Now knight f6. This looks like it's attacking the e4 pawn. The knights are of course looking at the opposing king. Also the white ones. But deep blue just castles here. Because it knows that it's not good. Black plays bishop e7. And we see rook to e1, defending the e4 pawn. Now white is actually threatening to capture the knight on c6, removing the guard of e5 so it can be captured by the knight on f3. Therefore, Garry Kasparov plays b5, kicking the bishop. Bishop drops back to b3, but is now on a dangerous diagonal, pointing towards black's kingside. Black would like to play d5, but that is controlled by white, so humbly black plays d6. d blue plays c3, preparing d4, and black castles. Deep blue does not want to deal with a pin on the knight, so it wants to prevent a bishop from coming to g4. It therefore plays h3. With a very similar idea, Garry Kasparov plays h6. It's now time to strike in the center, and deep blue plays d4. There are now some threats on e5, and maybe the e-file can open up. So Kasparov prophylactically plays rook e8. Now the rook is in a good position if the game opens up. But this game is not about to open up. Knight to d2. 
to. Here we see the positional slow dance begin. So the knight is coming to f1 and then to g3 where it will be looking at f5. The computer does not have to come up with these ideas itself, though all these moves have been programmed in beforehand by chess grandmasters working for IBM who built the deep blue machine. So we shouldn't be surprised to see very intelligent looking moves in the opening stage. What should surprise us is that the programmers allowed the computer to play the Spanish opening because when it reaches the end of the pre-programmed opening book it will be in a position that will require actual chess understanding. Black plays bishop f8. Back to its starting square. Kasparov very patient here. Knight f1. And bishop d7. And the knight comes to g3. Knight g3. All of the pieces are still on the board. The two players, the one made of steel and the one made of flesh and blood, are just positioning their pieces in the optimal places, waiting for the correct moment to strike. One strategic goal for black is to get rid of this strong bishop pointing at his king. So Kasparov plays knight to a4. Deep blue plays bishop c2, preserving the bishop. But this allows Kasparov to play c5. But deep blue answers this very patiently with b3. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? Those are the starting words of a paper written in 1950 by the founder of computer science, Alan Turing himself. In the paper, he introduces a test, the Turing test, that is meant to show if a computer is truly intelligent. 47 years later, IBM built Deep Blue. Kasparov reconsiders his aggression and goes back. Knight c6. And here Deep Blue plays d5. And this is aggressive in a way, it attacks the knight. But the knight easily moves out of the way. Knight e7. And now we have a closed pawn structure. The game is not opening up. We still have all the pieces on the board. Bishop to e3. Developing the last minor piece. Knight g6. Mimicking white's play with these aggressive looking knights looking at the opponent's king. Kasparov has a very interesting plan here. After deep blue plays queen to d2, he plays a very surprising move, knight to h7. What on earth does that do? The idea is that after deep blue launches with a4, trying to break up the pawn structure over here and maybe make the game more open and more tactical, Kasparov can then play knight to h4. He is looking to trade off this knight here. 
Kasparov would like to trade off pieces. Deep blue obliges. Knight takes h4. And it's the first blood. And of course, when the knight moved away from f6, it meant that the queen now has a line of sight to h4. So queen can recapture with queen takes h4. Deep Blue ran on a purpose-built computer chip that could do nothing but play chess, but it did so extremely well. The chip could calculate one million chess positions per second, and IBM had 200 of these chips running in parallel. That means that Deep Blue was calculating 200 million positions per second. And here it played queen e2. This is actually looking at the b5 pawn, maybe playing bishop to d3, capturing on b5 and crashing through. So Kasparov realized he needed the queen back for the descent defense and played queen d8 like so. Deep blue intensifies the pressure with b4. Now we are looking both at b5 and c5. Queen c7 defense c5. But rook e to c1 lines up against the queen. And um, here's a little tip. If you are thinking about what rook to put on a file, think about what area of the board you want to play on. Since deep blue moved the e rook over here, it is clear that deep blue is looking at the queen side of the board and concentrating its long-range pieces on the queen side. And Kasparov, he didn't like this. And he played c4. With the rook lined up against his queen, Kasparov chose to close the position. Now the c-file won't open up anytime soon. This makes the game even more slow, even more strategical and positional. Soon the machine will not be able to find a productive move. 200 million positions per second and no imagination. Rook A3. Or maybe there is a plan. Kasparov reacts instantly with a rook to c8. Is this about the c file that is closed? No. It's about the a file because after rook on c to a1, Kasparov can play queen to d8. This is because he needs to be able to have the queen on this rank x-ray defending the rook on a8 so that after a takes b, a takes b, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, he will have queen takes rook not losing a piece. And deep blue sees that okay you defended, the human defended against my plan of coming through on the A-file. So it shifts its focus to the king side and plays F5 with a possible attack on the king side. Kasparov realizes he has to reactivate this knight that was somehow 
somewhat deactivated on h7 because it had to make room for the exchange of the trade of a knight here on h4. So he goes back with knight to f6. And deep blue plays f takes e. And e takes d. And here, deep blue plays queen f1. Kasparov has a clear plan. He wants to improve this knight. So he plays knight to e8. The plan is clear. He wants to come to d6, which will be an excellent square for the knight. Deep blue plays queen to f2. Kasparov follows through on his plan. Knight d6. And the knight is excellent here. It's blocking the pawn. It can look over the pawn. That's why it's good to block a pawn with a knight. Because it can jump over pieces. It can look on the base of white's pawn structure. It can even use the pawn as a shield. It's a very good positional idea to put the knight here. Let's contrast that with the weird thing that Deep Blue did with the queen here. Because here we see the weakness of the artificial intelligence in Deep Blue. Kasparov's knight was always coming to d6. So if Deep Blue wanted its queen on f2, it could have just played it in one move, instead of coming to f1 first. But Deep Blue had reached the end of its pre-programmed opening book, and here it had to think for itself. It cannot produce ideas, and therefore it cannot come up with a plan to improve the position. At least... That is what it looks like. Deep blue plays bishop to b6, hitting the queen. And now this bishop is backed up by the queen on f2. So the queen slides out of the way. Queen to e8. And now we see rook 3 to a2. This looks like one of those weird computer moves that just don't do anything. And if you consider what Kasparov will play in a moment, it sure looks like he thought that was the case. But um, remember this little rook move. Kasparov plays bishop to e7. And we see bishop to c5. And now Kasparov just plays bishop back to f8. So Kasparov is playing moves that just do not do anything. But deep blue plays knight f5. This knight came from b1. d2, f1, g3. A long time ago. And it was always going to f5. Now this knight is threatened twice. We have to do something about that. So Kasparov captures the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes f5. Deep blue recaptures with the pawn. E takes f5. And this pawn is very dangerous. Threatening to advance. So Kasparov stops it by playing f6. Deep blue chops off the knight. Bishop takes d6. And we see bishop takes d6 from black. And now deep blue has finished the kingside operation. 
that it started some moves ago. All these moves were actually about the rooks on the A-file that Kasparov defended by placing his queen on the back rank. But you see now, deep blue plays A takes B. And Kasparov is very pleased after he plays A takes B himself. Because here he had calculated a very nice computer trap. Here the machine will play queen to b6, hitting the pawn and the bishop. It will be able to win two pawns or a bishop, and that is what computers want. That's how they are programmed. They search millions of positions looking for the ones where they have more pieces than their opponent, and then they play the moves needed to get to those positions. But Kasparov has a trap, because after queen b6, he can allow deep blue to go up material, and while it is wasting its time capturing pieces, he can go all in for a perpetual check against the king and get a draw. He's already up one game in the match, so a draw with the black pieces would be just perfect here. But deep blue did not play queen to b6 here. And this is where deep blue passed the Turing test. It played bishop to e4. This move is patient. It's not taking any material. It's positional. This is a positional move. It's a strategical move. And it is a winning move. Nobody in the world knows chess better than Garry Kasparov. And he could not believe that the machine was able to play such an intelligent move. For years he was convinced that the deep blue team was actually cheating and had a human player help the computer. Rook takes a2. And queen takes a2. Do you remember when deep blue played rook 3 to a2 and it just looked like one of those meaningless computer moves? Well, this was the point. So you would be able to recapture with the queen, getting a battery along the a file. And suddenly you can see how deep blue started a plan on the a file, then broke through on the king side. But when Kasparov had defended against the attack, it didn't push on on the king side. It played bishop e4, defending both pawns and just locking everything down. So that when it crashes through on the a-file, it will be unstoppable. Queen d7. Kasparov desperately tries to do something about the queen and rook infiltration. Queen a7. And Kasparov plays rook c7. This threatens the queen. Queen moves out. Queen b6. Kasparov is desperate. He needs the queen and the rook out of his house. He plays rook b7 attacking the queen. But deep blue throws a check with rook a8. Rook a8, check to the king. 
near Kasparov plays um, king to f7. This could look weird. Why not king h7? But if he manages to trade off the heavy pieces, the queens and the rooks, he wants the king towards the center. He wants an active king in the end game. The queen has to get out of the attack from the rook. Deep blue plays queen a6. Kasparov tries to get his pieces in just a little bit of a better position with queen to c7. Deep blue plays queen c6 and notice how Kasparov would have been able to trade the queens. But it would have always been beneficial to deep blue. For instance, if you take here, we can recapture with the pawn, have a protected passed pawn looked after by this nice bishop at already attacking the rook and it's going to be impossible to defend the pawn becoming a queen someday. So Kasparov does not trade the queens but instead plays queen to b6 with a check and deep blue plays king to f1. The reason is the same that we saw queen f7 active king for the end game but uh, look after this king. Deep blue is threatening checkmate on e7 so Kasparov blocks it with rook to b8. Deep blue attacks the queen again with rook a6. Kasparov's queen is attacked and the problem is that if he tries to get out of it by exchanging queens queen takes c6 Deep blue will recapture with the pawn. D takes c6. And one of the many problems here is that after rook e8, which is the best move, we have bishop d4 check, king f8, and bishop d3. And from here, the bishop is covering the queening square for the forward c pawn. And black will have to give up the bishop. Rook a7, push the pawn to stop this pawn from becoming a queen. So he's losing a bishop for a pawn. And the b and the c pawns are going to fall easily to the rook. And the bishop, they are locked on light squares, so they are vulnerable to the light squared bishop. And once they go, deep blue will push the b and c pawns forward with ease, because deep blue will be upper bishop, and make a queen or two queens, and then checkmate is a trivial matter. And one should think that our story ends here, because Kasparov resigned. And the game was over. But there is more. Because this position, the final position, is a mystery. On move 44, deep blue played king f1. And that means that its last move, rook to a6, is a terrible, terrible mistake. In this position, Kasparov could have played queen to e3, threatening a perpetual check. Being able to just check the white king forever, which would be a draw. And for many, many years, the story was that Kasparov had resigned in a drawn Position. The machine had played so well and so intelligently that the human world champion couldn't imagine that it would allow 
something as simple as queen e3 with a draw. But this position is a mystery. I took my modern 5 GHz 8 core computer and I had it analyze this position for 24 hours. And it ended up saying that white has a slight advantage. Before rook a6, everybody agrees that deep blue has a crushing winning advantage. But after rook a6, the modern chess computer says that white has only a slight advantage. But it cannot find a way for black to make a draw even after crunching on the position for 24 hours. So what is it? A draw? Or did deep blue just blunder from a crushing position into only a slight advantage? Or had the IBM supercomputer from 1997 calculated farther than even modern chess engines and seen that this is not just a slight advantage, but actually a forced win. IBM dismantled Deep Blue right after the match and refused Kasparov's demands for a rematch. So it looks like we will never know. In this position, Deep Blue has a crushing advantage. And that is what everybody is focusing on. But that's not what is important. What is important is that it played the game in such a way with especially bishop e4 on move 37 that the foremost expert on chess in the world thought that it was a real intelligence. It was indistinguishable for the most competent person in the world to an actual, actual intelligence. And IBM had not come up with anything revolutionary. They had just made the computer really, really fast.